Your heads, Jeff with Gear Report. We're here at the Denton Military Vehicle and Gun Show at Denton Farm Park in North Carolina. Uh, this is a weekend long outdoor, you know, military vehicle and they uh, show and then they have vendors and tents and stuff. Part of what we do here is we show off our vehicles. So we have the Project Humvee Battle Wagon and then uh, Joe, also from Gear Report, is here as well. His Humvee is hiding back here. You'll see it when we come around the corner. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to do a walk around of the battle wagon first. All right. I'm going to talk about some of the things we've done as far as projects and upgrades and that kind of thing. And then uh, when we're done with that, we're going to shut this video down. And then uh, shortly after, we're going to fire up the camera again and put Joe in front of the camera and he's going to give us a tour of his Humvee. So you get to see the, the things he's done. We've taken a little different approach on some things. I think you're really going to like some of the things he's done as well. So why don't we dive in? We'll start on the exterior of the battle wagon and talk about some of the things we've done. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what status everything was in last time we did a video. So I believe that this Laverne brush guard is one that is uh, an addition since the last video. This is the much heavier duty version of the brush guard than what was on it originally. And it required use of a different set of mounting brackets here around the winch uh, on the you know, 87 Humvee M1038. So that's a change that we've made. We already had these aftermarket headlights in. And uh, you know, as we go through things here, uh, I'm going to come back later and fill in some links to uh, where you can get some of these things. So if you're interested in the headlights, and, and we also, I'm also going to mention when we have articles. So we have an article on Humvee headlights. I don't think I have an article on the brush guard. Um, okay, so moving up top, this is a new project we're working on and uh, it's with Light Force. So Light Force is an Australian company and they make really, really high end um, off-road lights. So what we have here, the side facing lights, one on each side, they're wired separately. This one and the one on the other side are both infrared lights. So I could flip them on and it'll give a little bit of a, a light pink glow, but you don't really see white light coming off of them. You've got the two 10 inch bar lights, double row bar lights here. That's white light and they are pretty darn bright. And then the center one, this Genesis light, they call it. Uh, I actually don't have that one wired up yet because <laughs> ran out of time getting ready uh, to come to the show here. I wanted to at least get them up there. And some of these may move around. This may not be the final resting place. I don't like the way that sounds. The final position for all of these lights. Um, we've got some additional lights I'll show you later that I could use some help trying to figure out where to put them. So I hope you leave some comments to help me figure that out. All of these lights up here are mounted on a light mounting bar from Custom Combat Trucks uh, out of Georgia. And I appreciate uh, Matt Speed and his team sending this for us to put on. And uh, you can see this was a very simple installation in that we have the two bolts that hold on the uh, rear view mirror, or not the side mirror on each side are what hold this on. So you pull these bolts out on each side, uh, set your mirrors down. Uh, trust me, I did this the hard way, learned this the hard way. If you try to do it as one person, it's very difficult to get everything lined up so you can put the bolts in without it falling down and leaving marks on your hood. Don't do what I did, all right? Get, get, make this a team lift, all right? Get someone to line that side up. Each of you put a bolt in, get the bottom lined up, put your bolts in, and then you can, um, Actually, if you just put one in to hold it in place and then get your mirror brackets in place and get all that. Um, it's easier if you have more, more hands. Um, if you have some additional hands to do that, this is probably a five minute job. If you do it the way I did it, it's an hour because I also had to grind the bolt head off, um, which was very unfortunate. Okay, so moving on. Uh, I believe the last time we did a video, we had the tan fiberglass X doors. And um, those went to uh, an active duty army major, actually, um, who purchased those for his own private Humvee. And I uh, replaced them with these supplemental armor doors. It's an X door, just like 
the regular X doors as far as the fiberglass portion and then it has this two layer of um, they call it armor I hate to call it armor because I think it'll stop a, like a 22 but not much anything else I think it's more for uh, early on uh, when troops were in like Afghanistan and Iraq and roadside bombs were really starting to come in this would stop some of the fragments coming up that's really about it uh, so you know, not really what you call a combat door but they also have uh, 5 8 inch thick laminated uh, glass you know some people call it bulletproof glass it ain't bulletproof this is bullet resistance glass it's a quarter inch on the normal windows, 5 eighths on these, so a little bit thick, thicker, a lot heavier. I think a normal door is 50, 54 pounds. These are about 75 pounds, so uh, you put some additional weight on these, but but I like them. They're with a little additional weight, uh, they are a little more sound resistant and uh, does pretty well. We put a new top on. I don't think we had this on last time we did a vid uh, video. This is from Breton Industries. They are an OEM manufacturer for the military. So, um, you know, this is a real deal ordered from them. They have a really good deal if you want to purchase them. Um, we'll, we'll go inside in a minute. Let's keep going around. I, I wanted to call out these uh, little Midland radios. I have one and uh, Randall is carrying one today, and we also have a console radio from Midland. They're all GMRS radios, and uh, we can talk to each other. So we have the base station here. We have two remote radios. We really appreciate them sending these to review because uh, it's really useful at a place like this where we didn't stay together all day, so we're able to communicate with each other. So I'm going to carry that in case uh, the Randall man needs anything from me. I'll have that hooked on here. All right, in the back you can see a few things that we've done. Uh, we have an article on gear report for making a tunnel cover from three quarter inch horse stall mat. This is a rubber mat. Looks to me like it's made from ground up old car tires. Um, three, three quarters of an inch thick. This is really heavy. And um, you see I used a circular uh, hole saw bit to cut the holes for the different uh, D-rings coming through there. This extends up, you'll see on the inside, it doesn't go all the way forward. Uh, I actually need to get another mat and put it in, but I haven't done that yet. You can see on the sides here and on the tailgate, the lizard skin coatings. And uh, I'm going to apologize right now. We have a train about to go past us. It may get loud, so bear with us if that happens. Part of the charm of the Denton Farm Park is the old Navy surplus train that runs around here. Uh, it's really neat, but it's also kind of loud, so bear with us. Uh, we have a lizard skin review, so if you're interested in this spray-on heat, and um, sound deadening material. Um, it's not bed liner, it's uh, ceramic based material. Uh, check out those reviews. We have a um, uh, application video, or application review rather, about how we prep the surface and sprayed it on. And then we also have the follow up uh, long term review that uh, shows how it's held up over time. So if we look down here, I think last video we had the backup camera hooked up, or, or rather screwed in, but not hooked up yet. Well, it's wired up and working. So when we get inside, we'll flip that on and see the picture that comes off of it. I, I love that little camera. Um, the airlift bumper is a new addition. So when we look at Joe's, we'll see the um, regular rear end to the M998 series trucks. This is a um, addition that required one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight brackets, some spacers, a bunch of hardware that I picked up at Tractor Supply, and then we have, um, I think it was Humvee US that sent. Uh, the Pintel is what came out already, and actually we required a few additional spacers and things for the backside as well. But then this portion right here, and then the two inch receiver hitch, 
was sent uh, for us to install and review and um, actually haven't haven't had a chance to use this just got this bolted on a few days ago and pulled the uh, M1102 trailer which is a mess right now because I got all the junk out of the truck and put it in there but uh, we pulled that uh, with the new airlift bumper and pencil and everything worked perfectly on the way here so very pleased with that uh, this is, uh, we have an article on how to install an airlift bumper on a Humvee as well. And Ruben from Damage Control Customs, we have embedded his video of how to do this installation on there. Um, he really boils it down and makes it pretty simple. So, um, made it a lot easier for me having his video there to reference. So, let's see, moving on. Trying to think, how are we going to show? There we go. Okay. Let's see if this light will let us see something in here. You can kind of sort of see in here is the shaft of a new set of shocks. So we put, I put new shocks all the way around since the last video and they made a very big difference in the ride quality. And I had a number of people say, you know what, the, sock, the shocks in these Humvees suck so bad that you can put new ones in, it's not gonna make any difference. And I think my original shocks that were in here were so incredibly worn out that I put the 12K version of the shocks in, the heavier duty ones, and they actually made a really big difference. You can see uh, down through there the new shocks that are in there. Uh, Ruben has also got a video on that uh, and I think I may have posted an article on how we did that install as well. And Chris, while you're down there, let me see. Point the camera, wrap it around and point up to the back side. Let me see, I'm gonna have to go to the other side to see what I'm looking for. That one, folks, and nope, we need the other one. We'll, we'll look at that. I, I wanted to show the Mountain Machine um, geared hub covers. I think they're gonna be easier to access from the front wheel. So let's go up and look at those now. Uh, really neat little uh, custom billet geared hub covers that they made. And yeah, actually, it's going to be visible really nicely from here right in there. You see that. We took the old, uh, I took the old metal covers, uh, just an aluminum cover off. Those uh, started out as a solid billet that they machined, Steve and his crew at uh, Mountain Machine. Uh, cut those and they put cooling fins on them and replaced the uh, hex screws with some Allen head screws and little anodized fill plug. It's, uh, you know, it gives you some cooling fins which may help with cooling but also uh, makes it look pretty cool. So uh, I think that those are the high points from the outside. So now let's go on the inside and have a look at some things we did in there. All right, so you can go check out the videos we've done already on the Oregon Aero seat covers. A huge, huge upgrade. There are uh, multiple types of uh, layers of memory foam that uh, make it significantly more comfortable. You can see like on the doghouse here, the texture of the uh, lizard skin coating and how that's held up. It's been uh, a little over a year since that was put in there and then painted over, so that works pretty well. We replaced the um, heater core in here, and I'm sure Joe will talk about that because he recently replaced his and had some issues with it. There's a 12 volt socket here, a pair of them, one of them running the radio, and this switch panel down below it's only got a couple active switches on it. I just disconnected the rest of them. Uh, number one is our light switch here, which if you look up, there is a little LED light module that is incredibly bright, and that is another light force item. We'll leave that one on. And I promised we would see what the backup camera looked like running. So there I flipped the switch and here it comes. There is what we see with the backup camera. So really pleased with that. And up here, you can see how the 
backup uh, mirror, the rear view mirror is mounted, screwed into the header up there, and then this camera uh, just clamps on. If you go look at our Humvee Mods article, um, easy Humvee modifications, there are a whole bunch of things in there, and this is one of them, how to install the backup mirror, as well as uh, links to the actual backup camera system also. All right, so down here, uh, something else we hadn't talked about before because it's brand new, is the switch panel. This is also from Light Force, and we've got a couple lights hooked up to it right now. I don't think we need the portable light. So you can see when you turn them on, they illuminate a nice uh, blue. Turn them off, so those are nice rocker switches. We've got the ram mounts brackets here, so you want to put your phone in, you squeeze this, set your phone up vertically in the center, and then let go, and it'll clamp your phone and hold it. They're incredibly uh, secure. I really like those far more than I thought I would. Um, here's some information about the Humvee. Let me clear that so now you can pause this video when you're playing it back and read all about it and some of the different um, things we've done in here already and I think the only thing we hadn't talked about on this list is black rack which we'll get to shortly you can see we did the center console here is actually the two level radio shelf and we have an aviation intercom. You, we've got a really cool article on how to add a Humvee or, or any military vehicle intercom for a hundred dollars. And this I did with uh, this four place aviation intercom plus four headsets, two there, here are the other two. I've got two sitting on the black rack. Uh, very pleased with that and uh, you know a trip like we did getting here an hour and a half on the road It was nice to be able to put the headsets on and talk to each other um, this uh, Gerber knife is there just for utility use and it's on top of an AR 500 armor uh, That's the company air 500 armor.com uh, blowout kit, so it's a uh, IFAC uh, a uh, first aid kit, infantry first aid kit, and uh, not your typical first aid kit with band-aids. It has, uh, you know, clotting agent and, you know, seals for sucking chest wounds and that kind of thing because we do a lot of shooting, spend a lot of time at shooting ranges, and should we have any kind of accident uh, with any of our firearms, we have the kit to deal with that. Um, this Fugu speaker, you can find a review of the Fugu speaker on gearreport.com. And here's the black rack. We have shown this a few times, but uh, really haven't gone into a lot of detail on it. It is a secure rifle rack system. So you see the clamp on the side here holds the AR rifle, It'll hold a variety of different rifle types, but it's optimized for the AR-15. And this kind of S shape to it allows it to cover the front and rear takedown pins so that someone can't just take it apart and steal your upper. Um, on the other side here, you can see the locking mechanism. Uh, there it is. So you see the key lock in there. I chose the keyed version. They also have electronic versions that use um, RFID and other things. And I said, uh, guys, just send me the keyed version. So we've got two on this side, and it mounts in this track. Um, we can put tracks on the back and put two more. So we'll have two rifles on the front, two more on the back, and it'll give us four rifles total that we can mount. I mentioned earlier the horse stall mat tunnel cover does not come all the way forward. You can see where it stops. I need to get a new piece to cover this section up here. And then I'm going to use the extra to make floor mats, nice heavy floor mats. Um, you see there's a ram mount here, a clamp on, there's a magnetic ram mount here. Those we use to mount action cameras when we're driving around doing things. Uh, neat things that we want to film in the battle wagon. You see the ram mount uh, cup, uh, they call it level cup XL cup holder here. Uh, we still use that quite a bit. And then this, uh, I think it's a Rubbermaid uh, 
organizer which looks very unorganized but uh, it's kind of strapped in place with some velcro up there and it holds all of our stuff pretty soundly all right up top here um, I need to get black foam we're just using colored pool noodles right now to take up the slack in the top so that water doesn't pool and it's incredibly effective I just like it to be black so I'm gonna have to go to a plumbing supply place to get some of those but it works really well let's see there's Buddha if you heard the whining in the background um, usually it's me but right now it's Buddha because he doesn't like being ignored all right so the front we had the Oregon Aero seats in the back we have what they call the military high back seats and uh, there's one here one on the other side much more comfortable than the stock seats that uh, come in the old uh, M998 series Humvees all right so a couple of things that we have here let's see these are the additional light force lights that we haven't had a chance to mount yet so we are in phase one of the light force project and phase one are the things you saw outside i've got to figure out where to mount this 20 inch bar um, it doesn't fit exactly where i hoped on the brush guard i'm not sure if we're going to find a way to put it there make a new brush guard or mount it elsewhere and then i could really use some feedback on where to put these lights these little rock nine lights are um, they're actually pretty bright they're uh, nine watt leds little surface mount lights i'll show you what they look like so if you have any thoughts or ideas on where we can put these, see what that looks like. Little aluminum mounting bracket here, um, or housing. I'm thinking they're gonna go up underneath kind of rock lights or wheel lights or something. I may put one or two under the hood, may put some in back. I'm not sure exactly where those are gonna go. We've got a couple ideas of, of where we're gonna put them. And then these inset lights, focus work with me camera there we go so the uh these larger 20 watt rock lights are inset lights so you see we'll cut a hole we're going to put these in the rear bumper and um the bumper's not quite deep enough so i'm not sure if we're going to trim the cooling fans or cut both sides of the bumper or find another place for them another option that we have with these is to cut a hole in the side like maybe right here and put one in each side um, i may make some sort of mounting bracket to put them focus up here something coming off of this uh, to point back into the bed area really not sure let me know if you have any thoughts or comments on where to put those um, we got four of those that uh, aren't wanting to cooperate with where we thought we were going to put them all right one more thing i wanted to talk about because we had the infrared lights oh here comes the train again because we had the infrared lights up top we also have some pulsar night vision so we did this last night just an initial test flipping on those infrared lights and then looking through the night vision goggles these are the edge gs 1x20 night vision goggles with the uh, skull crusher mount on them and they were incredibly effective i mean it was really really cool looking through those uh, let's see what else do you want to talk about I think that about wraps it up folks uh, you can see some of the scrap from the horse stall mat that I put down here as a floor mat there's a look at uh, how the dash is looking I'll put some more light up here we got the bigger steering wheel the newer turn signal flasher unit the newer uh, emergency brake lever it is a three-speed you see that there here's the Midland radio the little gmrs radio that i mentioned earlier and uh that rifle here has got our custom gear report handguard from unique ars and uh vortex uh a, a main vortex optic as well as a little backup uh, 
RMR on the side and a slag fire stock. And the other one we're going to shoot a video on tomorrow, probably, that is our uh, takedown AR pistol project that's got the Frontier Tactical um, multiple caliber system, MCS, that makes it a takedown and a Gibbs side charge upper and a tail hook on the back. I mean, it's got a lot of goodies in there. We'll talk about that in more detail. So that's the tour, folks. Um, I apologize for taking so long to go through everything. If you have any questions or comments or anything, leave them. We'll get back to you. If you wanted to see anything in more detail, let us know, and uh, we'll help out any way we can. Um, I think I'm going to get the camera in the hands of Joe here shortly, and we'll do a similar walk around with his MV and see what things he has done. I am particularly interested in hearing about this electric winch that he developed a new and creative mounting method for. So stick around. We'll be back with Joe's Humvee shortly.